political, social and moral forces in our country have been invited to contribute to the conduct of the current democratic process in Rwanda. The process of democratization in Rwandan political life is also viewed as a solution to the war which has been going on in Rwanda since the 1st of October 1990. This unjust, fratricidal and costly war has no objective reason for existing. The government of Rwanda feels that there can be no military solution to this conflict. That is why the government has committed itself to seek a negotiated solution to this conflict. May I also be permitted to inform the international community of the government's of the efforts undertaken by the multi-party transitional government to end this conflict. These efforts have been directed towards the Rwandan Patriotic Front which began the war on the one hand and on the other hand to the neighboring countries all with a view to normalizing our relations and to coordinating our actions to restore peace in the sub-region of the Great Lakes countries. The Assembly now is going to hear a statement by the Prime Minister of the going to hear a statement by the Prime Minister of the Republic of Rwanda, His Excellency Dr. Dismas Nsengi Yeremi. I ask the Chief of Protocol to escort His Excellency. I have uh, great pleasure in welcoming the Prime Minister of the Rwandan Republic, His Excellency Dr. Dismas Senkuyaremi. I invite him to address the General Assembly. Excellence. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, heads of delegation, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the 47th session of the United Nations General Assembly provides the government of Rwanda and its transitional democratic government the fortunate opportunity to pay honor to the annual meeting of international diplomacy and thus to make its contribution to the debate on peace, security, and development in the world. But above all, allow me, Mr. President, to express to you my warm congratulations on your election to the presidency of the 47th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Your election is confirmation of the esteem and the respect which you enjoy within the international community. You are a man of experience, of dialogue, and of conviction. These outstanding qualities guarantee success 
for the work of this august assembly. The delegation of Rwanda wishes to assure you, sir, of our complete readiness to make a positive contribution to the success of this session. The concern for effectiveness in the service of peace, of justice, and of development always animated your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Samir Shahabi. May he find here the expression of our deep gratitude for his important contribution to the development of the United Nations. Mr. President, may I also be permitted on behalf of my delegation to very warmly pay tribute to the courageous and innovative initiatives which have been undertaken by our Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Butros Butros Ghali. Initiatives for peace, for justice, for security, and for international cooperation, and also for the mutually supportive development of all members of the world community. Such initiatives are certainly intended to open up a new political, economic, social, and cultural order on an international basis. This involves creating international solidarity among the peoples and the countries of the planet so that they can jointly achieve their common de destiny in peace and justice. Similarly, my country, Rwanda, is happy to note that between September 1990 and September 1992, the United Nations has carried out important actions to improve international, political, and economic relations. In this regard, there is reason to mention some particular achievements. The program of action for the poorest countries was adopted at the United Nations Conference on the Least Developed Countries, which took place in Paris from 3 to 14 September 1992. The United Nations New Agenda for the Development of Africa in the 1990s was adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on 18 December 1991. A new partnership for sustainable development was advocated by the eighth session of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, which took place in Cartagena, Colombia, from 8 to 25 February 1992. And Agenda 21 was adopted by the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development which was held in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil from 3 to 14 June 1992. This is a limited sample of actions geared to the same goal, that of the progressive building of a world more united and more mutually supportive. However, such a goal can only be achieved after we have the definitive elimination of totalitarian or autocratic regimes which hinder the flowering and development of peoples in many countries of the world. Therefore, this means that there must be the restoration of democracy and of political pluralism, which are a necessary precondition for the success of a new international political order. That is why, since 10 June 1991, 
Rwanda firmly decided to move from autocracy and a single party system to democracy and political pluralism. Since that time, 16 political parties have been officially registered and five of them are represented in the democratic transitional government which I have the honor to lead since the 16th of April 1992. The current democratic process in Rwanda, although it has passed certain important stages and has become irreversible, nonetheless is encountering some difficulties because of the existence of forces which are resistant to change. We think that this is the result of the fact that in politics, as in physics, when forces of change are set in motion, forces of inertia begin to stir and resist them. That is why the transitional government has set as a major goal the, the solid establishment of democracy in the country. To do this, the government decided to undertake in-depth reforms to transform Rwandan political life. Thus, institutional change appropriate machinery will be set up to allow for the effective participation by the population in the management of public affairs. Thus, political, social, and moral forces in our country have been invited to contribute to the conduct of the current democratic process in Rwanda. The process of democratization in Rwandan political life is also viewed as a solution to the war which has been going on in Rwanda since the 1st of October 1990. This unjust, fratricidal, and costly war has no objective reason for existing. The government of Rwanda feels that there can be no military solution to this conflict. That is why the government has committed itself to seek a negotiated solution to this conflict. May I also be permitted to inform the international community of the governments of the efforts undertaken by the multi-party transitional government to end this conflict. These efforts have been directed towards the Rwandan Patriotic Front, which began the war on the one hand, and on the other hand, to the neighboring countries, all with a view to normalizing our relations and to coordinating our actions to restore peace in the subregion of the Great Lakes countries. Within this framework, an agreement on mutual security cooperation was signed with Uganda on 8 August 1992. Along with the Rwandan Patriotic Front, the government has resolutely committed itself to carrying on a frank and sincere dialogue. Within this context, direct negotiations have been going on in Arusha, in Tanzania, since 10 July 1992. Participating in these negotiations are observers, specifically from Burundi, Tanzania, Uganda, Zaire, Senegal, France, Belgium, Germany, 
the United States of America, and the Organization of African Unity. The parties concerned have also wished that the United Nations also might be able to participate in these negotiations. The first phase in these negotiations, which took place from 10 to 12 July 1992, ended with the signing of a ceasefire agreement between the two parties. There is reason to welcome the fact that this ceasefire has been respected by all sides in spite of some irregularities. The second phase, which took place from 10 to 18 August 1992, brought about the signing of a protocol agreement for a government of laws, a protocol which defines the basic principles which are to govern political life in Rwanda. That is to say, national unity, democracy, political pluralism, and respect for human rights. The third phase of negotiations, which took place from 7 to 17 September 1992, has just been uh, suspended and will resume on 5 October 1992. Nonetheless, the two parties have taken already another important step by agreeing to the existence and the separation of three powers, the legislative power, the executive power, and the judiciary power. Let us recall that this third phase is, devo is devoted to the definition of the machinery and procedures for power sharing. The Rwandan government defends respect for the institutions of the state and agrees to the integration of the Rwanda political front into those institutions as well as the institutional arrangements being made to speed up the process of democratizing Rwandan political life and for favoring the effective participation of the political forces of the country in managing public affairs. The work of this phase will resume on 5 October and we hope that at that time the two parties will show sufficient political open-mindedness and realism to quickly find common ground. After that phase there is provision for a fourth one which will study the modalities for integrating the fighters of the Rwanda Patriotic Front into the Rwandan army. Over and above the efforts to end the war going on in Rwanda and which has been going on since 1 October 1990, Rwanda repeats its firm will to find a just and lasting prob uh, solution to the problem of its refugees. To this end, the Rwandan government reaffirms solemnly that the return of Rwandan refugees to their country is an inalienable right which no one can challenge. Actions to facilitate the welcoming of these refugees who opt for repatriation have been undertaken. One can also particularly mention the identification of reinstallation zones the promulgation of a general amnesty law, sensitizing and educating the population to welcome the, repat uh, the repatriated people in a spirit of reconciliation and peaceful coexistence. The Rwandan government also has decided to ensure diplomatic protection for Rwandan refugees who may have chosen to stay in host countries. These refugees will have to enjoy all the civil rights which are recognized for other Rwandan citizens.
the government of Rwanda takes this opportunity to make another urgent appeal to the High Commissioner for Refugees and to the Organization of African Unity whereby they would accelerate the completion of the plan of action for the repatriation of Rwandan refugees and the holding of the donors round table which should take place before the end of this year. Mr. President, the situation of war in our country has entailed considerable economic, social and cultural losses. One of the unfortunate consequences of this war undoubtedly remains the tragic situation of the displaced persons who, who presently exceed 350,000. They are located in 20 camps where dozens of people die every day from hunger, cold, and poor hygiene. We take this opportunity to make an urgent appeal to the international community to come to the assistance of these displaced persons. We expect this community to come to our assistance by providing food, tents, blankets, and medicine. In monetary terms, what is needed to maintain these displaced persons resulting from war amounts to 30 million US dollars per year. Moreover, we are asking friendly countries which have always stood by us not to remain aloof, but rather to give increased financial assistance for the rehabilitation of infrastructures and areas destroyed by war and also for economic recovery. In terms of international trade, Rwanda has suffered heavy losses because of the closing of the Kigali-Mombasa-Kampala road. Current talks among the users of the North Corridor are of great interest for Rwanda. Rwanda would like to see this road reopened as quickly as possible. Mr. President, the Rwandan economy, like other developing countries, continues to feel the effects of the world economic imbalances and the weight of debt. They still are suffocating the economies of the poorest countries in the world. The drop in world prices for coffee which is the principal export product of Rwanda and which went from $2.50 in 1986 to less than 60 cents since 1992 has caused a considerable drop in earnings for the Rwandan economy. As a result of this deplorable situation, the gross domestic product of Rwanda at first stagnated and then dropped, while the balance of payments problem remained largely one of indebtedness, and some development pro projects had to be stopped because there were no means for investment in them. Despite these not very encouraging indicators, the government took courageous measures to limit the losses drastic reduction in public expenditures, credit restrictions, currency devaluation, which in two years led to a drop in one half of the value of the currency. At this time, the government of Rwanda expresses its gratitude to the friendly countries and international organizations which have been broadly cont contributing to the execution of our structural adjustment program. The government of Rwanda is also counting upon them 
to support the sectoral programs for economic recovery which are underway in our country. Mr. President, after having surveyed the situation which prevails in our country in terms of economics and politics, allow me now to take up some of the major international problems of the moment before getting down to the details of the subject and like other delegations which expressed themselves from this prestigious rostrum I would like to warmly welcome into the great family of the United Nations the new members of the organization we sincerely and warmly congratulate them and we encourage them to work for the triumph of the noble ideals of the United Nations. Mr. President, mankind remains torn by bloody conflicts and wars which result from anachronistic situations due to colonization, oppression, racism, and ideological intolerance. The seeds of blind violence are multiplying everywhere where the sovereignty of peoples and the integrity of territorial integrity of states are trampled upon and in those places where totalitarian regimes are crushing the dignity and fundamental human rights. In this context, the Rwandan delegation lauds the untiring efforts of the United Nations to extinguish the diverse hotbeds of tension and to put an end to murderous fratricidal conflicts which go on in the north as well as in the south of our planet. In this respect, the government of Rwanda would like to congratulate the Secretary General of our organization for his remarkable contribution as well as for the ways and means he has advocated through his agenda for peace which would favor preventive diplomacy and actions for peacemaking peacekeeping and peace building Rwanda also welcomes the initiative undertaken by the 28th summit of the heads of state and of government of the Organization of African Unity which allowed the Security Council to give serious consideration last July to ways and means for controlling the outbreak of massacres in South Africa. My country's delegation hopes that dismantling the legal pillars of apartheid will quickly lead to the establishment of a multi multiracial and democratic South African society. It encourages the South African government to conclude negotiations with the ANC and to set up a democratic government which is representative of all South African people. Rwanda is very happy over the resumption of the peace neg negotiations in the Middle East. We encourage all the parties involved to cooperate in good faith so that this new diplomatic gift will be maximally used for the benefit of lasting peace. Against this background, the government of Rwanda pays tribute to the gesture of the new Israeli government whereby it stopped new Jewish settlements in the occupied Arab territories. The government of Rwanda also supports all efforts to restore peace in the Horn of Africa and in Liberia as well as other regions in the world 
in particular in Lebanon, in Afghanistan, in Cambodia, in Cyprus, uh, Cyprus rather, and in Bosnia-Herzegovina. The success of the commitment of the United Nations to the process of national reconciliation and democratization now underway in Central America reflects the new confidence and new influence of our organization in the management of crises and in the search for negotiated solutions to local conflicts. What is more, Rwanda notes with satisfaction the continuing dialogue between the two parties directly involved in the conflict in Western Sahara. And so Africa still hopes to see finally the organization under the auspices of the United Nations of a referendum on the future status of this territory. Mr. President, Rwanda pays tribute to the current restructuring of the UN system and to the end of the Cold War. It is our wish that disarmament will favor a net positive transfer of resources to the South where the fight against poverty remains a permanent challenge. It is on this note of hope that I would like once again to make an urgent appeal to the international community to give diplomatic support to the process of peace negotiations in Rwanda and to help financially and materially with the repatriation of Rwandan refugees. Active participation by the United Nations in the Arusha negotiations would be an, ad an additional guarantee with respect to the will of the international community to find a just, rapid, and lasting solution to the Rwandan conflict. The appeal also goes to the international community to come to the assistance of the 350,000 displaced persons and also restoring dynamism to our economy. For its part, the government of Rwanda has made a commitment to carry out the current democratization process in our country until we establish a law-based state, a government of laws, where all Rwandans whether they live inside of or outside of the country, will have the right to freely exercise, with no discrimination whatsoever, their civil rights, and also will be able to participate actively in the management of public affairs. Thank you. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of the Rwandese Republic for the statement. I ask the Chief of Protocol to escort His Excellency. We have heard the last speaker in the general debate for this meeting. The meeting is adjourned.